Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing as we are going to cover each and every topic related to geography on this channel. Now in today's session on population geography, we are going to study very interesting concepts of optimum population, overpopulation and underpopulation alongside their factors and examples from all across the world. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share all the videos with others as well. So now let's discuss the concepts of over, under and optimum population. Now one thing that is important to consider here is that these concepts are not just concepts related to demography. These are concepts which are interdisciplinary in nature. And by that we mean that these are also economic and social concepts at the same time, but we consider them as a geographical concept when we associate it with the spatial pattern, spatial phenomena. So we say that these are purely socio-economic concepts which are applied in geography. That's why we say world geography, world population geography and socio-economic concepts where we study the concepts of optimum population, underpopulation, overpopulation and its various factors. So first of all, we need to understand why do we need to understand these three terms, right? So all the problems concerned with population are generally associated with either two things, over or under situation. It means either it is too much population or it is too lesser population. These are the two steps where we are always concerned with. Right. So deviations from the equilibrium. Now the balance here itself. Remember, we talked about in physical geography, the isostatic balance. The balance is always important for the system to run in a smooth way. So when we say balance in human systems, population is one of the parameters where we need to understand this balance. So this equilibrium is the balance between higher and lower. Right. So this is the position called optimum position right or optimum population which gives rise to the concepts of overpopulation and underpopulation. Now this is the question why does this equilibrium concept give rise to over and under because this is the reference frame this is the middle path from where if you go one side you find overpopulation if you go the other side you'll find underpopulation right so the reference point is optimum population here. So to know about the problems of overpopulation and underpopulation it's very important first to clear the concept of optimum population which is most important here. So let's understand it from this graph which I was talking. So per capita income and size of population. Now remember this is socio-economic concept and primarily coming from the economics concept of this graph that you see here. Right. So if you observe in this graph, this particular side is under and this particular side is over and this particular point of maximum if you observe is the optimum point. From here this particular side, it means this O and N side, this population is underpopulation, right? And maximum per capita income is only achieved at this particular point of this population that is O N. But what about after that? If the population grows further, what happens to per capita income here? It happens that it goes declining. Right? With further increase in population, the per capita income goes declining. It means this situation where per capita income is going down is overpopulation. Right? It's going beyond this particular point of optimization. Right? Now to understand it in more simple and clear way, there is one more graph that we could use to understand the situation of decline after an optimum point. And we know this by the name of diminishing returns. Remember this theory, the output and input? where after a given point of maximization, there is a diminishing return that we get. So this economic concept can be applied in understanding this optimum population theory as well, right? So the graph says that at a particular point, the maximization of the resources and its output is achieved by a given population. But after that, even if we keep applying all the factors of production and everything, still the returns will be negative. Right. So that is what we understand that optimum population and over and under population are inseparable concepts. So in order to understand over and under, first what we do is 
understand the optimum population theory. So now let's understand where this concept is coming from. So the great scholar Edwin Cannon in his book Wealth which was published in 1924. Now remember 1924 is between the first world war and second world war. The economics of the world was going through a lot of changes. This is when this theory became popular and it was more further popularized by scholars like Robbins, Dalton, Carl Saunders who were the great scholars from London School of Economics. So you see the economics people, ex economics scholar playing a great role in the conceptualization of this theory of optimum population. So what does this say? Optimum population theory is not what we understand just as a criticism of Malthusian theory. But what is it saying? It is saying that there is a linkage between size of population and production of wealth. That is where it was conceptualized. So to understand this optimum population theory, which is more realistic, more close to the reality than Malthusian population theory, we need to understand certain definitions. So first definition if you observe is the Robbins definition what he say the population which just makes maximum returns possible is the optimum population or best possible population it means what the returns in terms of economic wealth that amount of population that produces maximum wealth this is Robbins definition then further if you observe Dalton's def definition optimum population is that which gives the maximum income per head now it's talking about income per head that is per capita income so that amount of population which gives us the maximum per capita income. That is what we know as the optimum population according to Dalton. Now further if you observe Carl Saunders definition, the optimum population is that population which produces maximum social welfare. Here it's social concept integrated with economic. That's why I said socio-economic concept, right? Now further if you observe the building concept, the population at which the standard of life is at maximum, this is optimum population. So here the word is standard of life or standard of living and the fifth one is Peterson's that is optimum population is the number of people remember it's about the amount or number of people that in a given natural cultural and social environment produces maximum economic returns so this is a little more broader concept that was given in this definition now further if you observe there are certain assumptions behind this concept of optimum population theory so what are those assumptions let's understand so the first assumption is that natural resources of a country are given at a point of time but they change over time it means this is a dynamic part natural resources keep changing there is no change in techniques of production this is one assumption taken stock of capital remains constant habitats and taste of people do not change ratio of working population to total population remains constant even with growth of population and working hours of labor do not change and modes of businesses that is does not change that is constant so what do you observe in this particular assumption set clearly is that only change only dynamic thing is the resources of a given region right on which the wealth is being built rest everything has been assumed to be constant so if you remember these kind of deductive approach theory nomothetic theories law building theories they always have this interplay of constants and variables some things are supposed to vary and some things are kept constant that's when the mathematical derivations and scientific approach could be put to use so these are positivistic nomothetic theories deductive approach theories which are coming from the economics and also the social part so now if you observe here the term optimum population may be defined in simple way as the density of population with which given resources and skills produces the maximum or what we say is the greatest economic welfare usually the maximum income per head that is per capita income and allows the highest standard of living this is the sum total of a definition right so further what we need to understand is this quality of life part the quality of life means what? It means that each inhabitant received the adequate amount of food. Remember, we have sustainable development goals, so zero hunger. So food, energy, water, air of high quality, adequate raw material to permit him or her to make all the things and devices he needs and adequate medical care, recreational facilities and cultural outlets. Now, remember, all these facilities and amenities are supposed to be of greatest quality. So what amount of population would ensure the greatest amount of quality? That amount is basically the optimum population. If there is deterioration in any of these quality, it means we are either under or we are going above the optimum, right? So that's the concept here. Now, 
One important thing to understand here is that optimum population is not a fixed point. It is varying, right? It changes with change in any of the factors that we assume here, right? So if any of the factor changes, optimum population point will change. That's important. Now let's understand its critical analysis or we say criticism. So if you observe this point, is the point of optimum population. Before this we have under and after this we have overpopulation in terms of size. What is the criticism in this particular theory? No evidence of optimum pop population level in any country has been found. We cannot measure it exactly to a particular point. Difficult to measure the optimum level and correct measure of per capita income is also not possible because of several computations problems and neglects the distribution aspects of per capita income. The distribution part is not given clearly. Remember, what does it mean? That if some place only few people are holding more money, still the per capita income will be total income by total population, right? It does not give you how much is the distribution of wealth right so that is where it's not talking about if the wealth is concentrated in few hands then also per capita income could be looking very good but actually the incidence of poverty on the ground could be more than what it seems to be right so people may be still poor but per capita income may look wonderful right so that's what is the problem here an optimum level not fixed but changes with time neglects social and institutional conditions no place in state policies does not explain the determinants of population growth so these are basic criticisms of population theory that is optimum population theory but it's important that it is an indicator it is a reference frame to understand these under and over population so now let's understand the overpopulation because now we know that optimum population is something which is a reference point so excess of population in an area at a given point of time right in relation to what available resources and technology denotes that it is a overpopulation right so it means in simple way when the carrying capacity now remember this catch word here carrying capacity is the catch word that we need to use carrying capacity is the amount of resources that can give benefits to a particular amount of population right that is how much they can carry that is their capacity so natural resources in terms of population when we say then this word carrying capacity is used so of an area is exceeded by its population so if carrying capacity is say 1 million people but it's now 1.5 million people in a given area so what will happen to this extra 0.5 million people they will not get adequate facilities. There will be crisis of energy, of employment, poverty and so many things will happen. This is what we are seeing all around the world in the countries where we have overpopulation, right? So this is the concept and when carrying capacity is exceeded in an area, then it is considered to be overpopulated in simple way. And then further if you observe that there may be two major factors or causes for this major themes if you observe right so population growth exceeds the existing resource basis and existing resources have been depleted this could be two potential pillars and under which there are several factors that contribute to these right so what you observe here the overpopulation may have two types one is called absolute overpopulation another is called relative overpopulation right so absolute overpopulation is when the absolute limit of production has been attained by standards of living remain low, right? So this is the absoluteness. But what is relativeness? When present production does not support the population, but production can be augmented, it can be changed, it can be improved. That is the relativeness. So in two ways we can understand this. Now further if you observe, this is from Global Footprint Network advancing the science of sustainability if you look into this map of the world you'll find the red zones deep reds and a little lesser deep reds and then the green zones and also the lighter colors what you observe where is more footprint it means where is the more density of population that area of the world represents the overpopulated areas of the world and in the same map, if you observe, the lesser footprint is also there, which are the underpopulated areas of the world. That is also clearly evident, right? So this is how we need to understand. Now further, overpopulation may not only occur at national level, but also at local and regional level. And here comes the concept of scale, right? So there is a scale factor involved in this particular overpopulation concept as well. For example, developed countries of the world like USA, Canada, France, Germany, New Zealand, all of them are developed countries as we know, right? So at national level, they are not overpopulated, but they have islands of overpopulation amongst them countries. Some portions of their country are overpopulated, right? Like for example, Java Island in Indonesia, parts of UP and Bihar in India are classic examples of regional or local overpopulation. 
they are in developing countries and china japan india bangladesh pakistan egypt right they are the top overpopulated countries of the world as we saw in the map right so further if you observe the regional overpopulation has certain factors that we need to understand so what are the factors rapid increase in rural population skewed distribution of agricultural land man land ratio very important agricultural mechanization lack of development of non agricultural sector low agricultural yield then lack of social development and non resilience of agricultural sector so these are the some factors which dominate at regional levels or local levels that lead to overpopulation in certain areas right now further regional or local overpopulation can be classified further into two parts one is agricultural or rural overpopulation and one is industrial urban overpopulation so rural overpopulation urban overpopulation agricultural overpopulation and urban overpopulation so for rural what you have here is india china japan right bangladesh egypt and all those countries so these countries are majorly having the rural overpopulation while industrial agglomerations of developed countries will have more population only industrial centers are clustered right that's where we say urban overpopulation now further we say underpopulation so overpopulation is just antagonic to underpopulation so here what we have is the population of an area is too small for the full utilization of its resources it means population is so less or so unproductive that it cannot even utilize whatever resources given in the area natural resources right so what you find the condition of underpopulation may also appear when resources of an area are able to support a larger existing population right so larger than existing population if it can support it means it is still to cover that ground right that's where under utilization is important here right so now if you observe further under population is characterized by what a situation where available resources are capable of supporting much larger population with no reduction of living standards right so further what we observe is the condition of under population may also be caused by a high rate of mortality in many countries we say epidemics pandemics famine war all these situations lead to people going away from the country people dying lot of issues there so in such countries it can be improved by improving medical facilities and also the peace treaties and so many other things right that's what the remedy would be but this is the world map where you could observe the red zones and the other areas where you find what the underpopulation and overpopulation like in the footprint map so here what you observe the countries like brazil canada russia right argentina amazon river basin all these areas of the world if you observe right they are all part of underpopulated countries they are sparsely populated areas of the world if you observe right so what is happening here in these countries the resources are much more right so per capita availability of resources remember here the per capita available resources are way ahead but still many of these countries are not able to utilize it right or they have the reserves they are not the actual resources but the potential resources as we say so due to low technical levels or maybe sparse distribution of population this is the situation of the world so this is the under utilized or under populated areas of the world so this is why we need to understand optimum over and under in a single screen in a single perspective because they are all interrelated and these are all very important in terms of population geography their distribution and their population patterns across the world so now when we have have discussed the concept of optimum population overpopulation and underpopulation alongside all those examples in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on different other aspects of population geography so stay tuned stay safe keep watching and learning and don't forget to subscribe to our channel